I don't know about you, but I feel love in the air. Well, with these fur babies that I have, I feel love in the air all the time, right? And of course, our families bring lots of love and joy to us. And I, of course, have an extended family, which is you. And I love and appreciate every single one of you. Hello, my sweet friends, and welcome to DIY with Nadia. In today's video, I have prepared 10 Valentine's wreaths to get us into the Valentine's season, and all of them are absolutely unique and different. Some of them are easier, some of them are a little harder, but all of them are fun. Let's get started on making some beautiful Valentine's wreaths. this wreath you're going to need this heart-shaped metal wreath form and this one is from the Dollar Tree and then also you are going to need four packs of the rectangular tablecloth you can do whatever colors you want but what I'm going to do is two whites one dark pink and one light pink the most important part is to make sure that you do get the rectangular one and this one is 54 by 108 inches or in metric 1.37 by 2.74 meters step one in this process is to cut up the tablecloths when you take your tablecloth out of the package make sure you don't open it you don't do anything with it this is just like it came out of the package then i'm going to cut it in half approximate where my half mark is right here and just cut it in half next i'm going to cut each half in half now our tablecloth is in four strips. What we're going to do next is take our side ones, open them up and cut them in half. Find the center here. Now that our tablecloth is cut into strips, each strip should be anywhere from one and a half to two inches in width. And then what we're going to do is cut each one of our strips in half this way. You should end up with strips that are about one and a half inches to six to six and a half inches. Grabbing a bundle and all I'm doing is making it look like little leaves, just like this. And all you're doing is just cutting these petals and I basically leave an inch in between and then I end up going up or down. This should not be an exact science. And all I'm making sure is to make sure that I get the tips. If I don't get the tips and they're going to be connected over here, as I can see some of these are already, that's okay. Just cut the tip right here on an angle and you should be fine. I have all my petals cut up and the design we're going to do is white, dark pink, white, light pink. That's why we did two packs of the white. As far as the wreath form is concerned, I work from the inside out. So starting from this inside ring, the way you put the petals on the wreath form itself is you do it in pairs. So I'm going to start by grabbing two of these white ones. And all I'm doing is just tying a knot. And I just do one knot. It is not going to go loose. I've done so many of these and one knot is just fine. This is not a slippery type of... Um, fabric this is just plastic so it it'll stand in place so i have white grab some pink petals don't pull too much because if you pull too much you can either rip it or you can stretch it and there's just no need to just tie it pull it a little taut and that's it and you keep on going two more of the white as far as how many in each is section you just keep on going until it feels nice and full i'm done with the first row or the inner row of the heart and look at this it looks so full and beautiful in the back i go all the way around and everything is by two in the front look how fluffy it is already by the time we are done with it it's going to look absolutely stunning now i'm going to start row number two which is the middle row it's a little higher than the other rows because this row is higher and these two are lower but it doesn't matter it's just going to make for a full and beautiful wreath here we go this is two rows in and as you can see you can't even see the outside row there you go 
It is so full and it's so fluffy. And now I'm just, anything that's sticking out on this side, I'm trying to just push it through. And then I'm going to start on the outside edge right here. I'm all done putting the petals on this wreath. It is so pretty. Next, I'm going to just go in the back and anything sticking out, I'm just going to push it through. The petals that are on this outer row, the ones that are on the inside right here, I'm going to, put, going to push it through. Any petals that are on top, they're going to be against the wall. They don't need to be pushed out. Just straighten everything out. When you're done doing all of that in the back, you just go in the front and start fluffing things out. This is my favorite part. It feels so fun and it feels so nice to do this. I wanted to show you what was left from the petals. And as far as the white, I basically have a full tablecloth left. So I recommend just using one of each color, which takes it down to only $3 to make this gorgeous wreath, plus a dollar for the wreath form itself, and another dollar for our little decor that I'm going to use. How cute is this? So that's a total of $5 for this wreath. Are you kidding me? That is really good. And look how adorable. We were still going to work with this. As far as the leftovers, don't throw these away. You can either do another wreath or save them for maybe Easter or just save different ones throughout the holidays and we can make something eventually with all the leftovers. I'm going to put my wreath to the side here and I'm going to use this little truck that I found at the Dollar Tree. First things first, let's get rid of this little uh, price tag thingy. Um, then the actual uh, connection here to this little rod, it's pretty solid. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to use my wire cutters and cut it down. I finally removed this little rod right here and I ended up just peeling the little flap that was on top of the rod and I ended up removing it. Next, there is this little hook. It's really, really soft and it's to basically hang uh, the, the little truck if you wanted to. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut it off. Now this is going, sh this should be the easy part. And it was, you saw that it came off really easily. I'm going to grab my end pliers and these are going to work really nice. And if you feel like it's a little rough, just grab some sandpaper and sand it down. Next, I'm going to trace the truck with a Sharpie. And the reason I'm doing this is if I just put it like this, it starts to blend in. So what I'm going to do is just really lightly go around the edges and fill that in and the nice thing is all the hearts are already filled in they have a little edge on them so this is just going to look like it's part of our actual project and then I'm going to fix the wheel just a little bit because this one is going all the way around and this one's not there you go and now it looks much better it stands out Next, I'm going to use this pink and white buffalo check and I'm going to make a bow to put right here where you see the XOXO. And I'm going to do it in the way we used to do it in grade school. So here we go. I'm going to make one loop, another loop, kind of making a simple bow. But I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm t going to take the little loops or we used to call them bunny ears and just loop them right there, tie them and you have a little bow. How perfect is that? Now we just straighten it out and make it the size that we want. I don't like it in the middle of the hearts. I think I'm going to put it right underneath to kind of make it look like there's a bow and the hearts are behind the bow right there. A little bit of hot glue right there. And then I'm going to grab these little buttons and I picked out this pink little button and I'm just going to hot glue it to the center of the bow. 
I think this little bow is such a charming addition to the truck, but definitely not something that you have to do. It's just something I decided to do just to give it a little bit of volume and a little bit, you know, so the truck does, is not flat and it's not like a picture. And I, it does do that and it works really well with the colors we got going here. So next I'm going to grab two pipe cleaners, fold them in half. I always do the two finger method right here. And then a little bit of hot glue, hot glue on top. And I'm ready to put my truck on. I'm just going to lay it down where I want it and then just attach it. And I'm just going to move it around a little bit. And there you go. Now that our wreath is all done, I'm going to grab a piece of floral wire. And this is quite thin. So I usually just twist these to make them stronger. I just had a piece left over and I wanted to use it up. But I'm just going to hook it up over here in this middle row because when I hang, I, I want it to be invisible. So here is what I do. I do one little twist and then I make this bottom part go up, this top part go down, and then I twist it onto the actual loop. This way I know it's not going to go anywhere and it's fairly secure. Then I'm going to hide this ugly part towards the bottom and there you go, you have your hook. The base for this wreath is going to be this foam heart from the Dollar Tree and the first thing I'm going to do is cut off that middle little heart. We don't need it but I am going to leave that little loop on top because that is what's going to hang our wreath. Next I'm going to grab this baby breath and I'm just going to cut off the tips. It is up to you if you want to leave it in those little bundles in some instances. I cut off the greenery and the bundles. It's just up to you. Now we're going to start hot gluing our baby breath to the heart. We're going to start in that middle tip, work our way around and to the bottom. We're going to make it look like the baby breath is laid out cascading from that top center all the way around and to the bottom. In the beginning, I'm just hot gluing one on top of each other, really not filling anything in. And then towards the end, that is when I started to cut off my baby breath a little closer to the white and then just inserting it into the little holes and filling it in all around the heart. For the ribbon, I'm going to use this Buffalo Check Gingham Ribbon and I'm just going to make a simple bow. I made sure that my tails were longer than the edges of the heart because I wanted to have the tails go over the heart a little bit. Then I just hot glue in the middle and then use the second little piece and hot glued it over the center of the bow. The contrast of the black and white looked really good on that hot pink and the white. It toned it down a little bit. It brought a little bit of farmhouse in and I'm not using too many colors. Black is the third color in this project and it just gives it such a beautiful elegance. For the center of the bow, I decided to hot glue a little pearl sticker and then for the bow tails, I just cut them on an angle on both sides. I'm going to be using a 14 inch metal wreath form and then I'm going to be using four rolls of this fuchsia pink and two rolls of this white deco mesh. Now it's time to attach the deco mesh to our wreath form but first I'm going to grab some pipe cleaners and cut those in half and I also like to kind of fold these in half so when I'm putting them on it's just easy to grab them and put them on. 
Then I am going to use a little uh, ruler mat here. And this one's from the Dollar Tree. For a dollar, this is an amazing deal. And I use these for my bubble method wreath uh, because it's just so easy to measure. Let's go over the basics. The wreath has six sections. In each section, we are going to make seven loops. Each loop is going to be eight inches long, exactly the length of this little mat. Now I'm going to unroll and layer my deco mesh. When I do this, I do make sure that it bubbles kind of down so it's not kind of curling up, it's curling down. That way when you're making your bubbles, they're going to stay the way they should and you kind of just set yourself up for, you know, a good wreath and an easy wreath to make. So I got pink. Next, I'm putting white on. Another pink on top. This is just going to be easy when I'm going to be separating them because I want the white to be in the middle. And then I'm going to go about an inch in here or two and gather. Going in between row two and three, I'm going to put my little tail down just like this grabbing a zip tie because I just sleep better at night just to show you where I'm going to be attaching it I'm going to be attaching it right there on the little intersection so this is going to go down as far as where we're going to be attaching our bubbles you can either do row two three or two three together um, it should hold just fine doing both of them, but I prefer doing either three or two. If you have a centerpiece that you're putting in your wreath and it's a little bit on the smaller side, go for row two. That way the wreath is going to bring it in just a little bit. If you have a big centerpiece like we have today, you might want to do row three. So that is what I'm going to be doing. And here we go. I just put my mat right underneath where I'm going to need to measure. And just do your eight inches and bring it up and in we're going to twist twice on top go back to the back twist it in the back twice also fold it in half and half again and then fold it back as you bring it in make sure you bubble it up Grab your pipe cleaner. We're going to twist twice on top and then bring our pipe cleaner to the back. We're going to twist twice in the back and then we're going to fold it either in half or in one fourth. These seem to be a little longer or something. So I keep on folding them twice. I'm done with my first section. I have seven loops in this section. I'm going to go ahead and make bubbles for these next two sections and I'll be right back. I'm about to make my last loop in my third section. So basically three rolls is enough for half of the wreath. And I just wanted to show you how much I have left here. The white one kind of came up short, but it's going to be a perfect to finish. There you go. The white is perfect to finish the wreath here. And of course, because this is my ending uh, little bubble, I'm going to use a zip tie. And I'm going to zip tie it to row three. To attach the second section, what I like to do is since we have attached the ending of this section in row three, I'm going to go ahead and go in row two. And same thing, remember how we did the intersection? Same thing. And this is what the connection looks like. We have this section ending and connected in row three. This one beginning in row two right there. They're both on the intersections right here. And when we open this up, this is not going to be shown. It'll be hidden, but you know that it's nice and secured. Now I'm just going to continue making the same eight inch little bubbles or loops. I'm on my last loop over here. 
grabbing eight inches and this is how much tail I have left grabbing my little zip tie here and I'm going to go between row two and three but in that lower intersection because we started on right there on the third one now it's time to open up our little bubbles and the way I recommend doing it is doing it from the bottom since I already layered how I want them what I'm going to do is I'm going to do each bubble from inside out so from the inside I'm going to first take my pink one and what I like to do is pull it down this is going to prevent fraying as you're going along then I'm going to grab my white one pull that one down and then my outer pink is going to go towards the back so my front one middle is the white and the top one is going to go towards the outside of the wreath for the centerpiece I'm going to be using the sign from the Dollar Tree and the first thing I did was remove the twine where it was hanging and what I did was I grabbed some lightweight spackling and I put some on top and the trick with this is make sure you overfill it just a little bit because as spackling dries it's going to shrink a little bit so when it's going to dry I'm going to sand it down and we're ready to paint it now that this is sanded I'm going to grab my love sign and this is a kit that Dollar Tree has and I'm just going to pull out the little love sign and as you can guess it's going to go right here and this part I'm going to eventually uh, paint with this brilliant magenta just find a color that's closest to whatever mesh you're going to use but before I color it with this color I'm going to paint both pieces white and the reason I do this is this is going to be much brighter and it's going to take less coats if you give a nice white coat kind of like a primer to your sign before I paint my love sign I'm just grabbing a dowel you could also grab the back of a paintbrush that's fine too but I like to use a dowel because it's flat and my circles have more more uh, chances of being uh, basically pretty equal throughout so I'm just go going to grab some paint and we are going to make little dots you can make little lines whatever you want to do but I'm going to make little polka dots because well I love polka dots even though my color matches the wreath really well when it dries it kind of is coming up a little bit on the redder side so what I'm going to do for my uh, actual wording is I'm going to add a little bit of white to lighten it up and then we're going to paint to attach my sign to the wreath I'm just going to be using some pipe cleaners now it's time to put my sign on my wreath I think that looks pretty good For this wreath you're going to need some chenille wires you're going to need some deco mesh you're going to need a heart wreath form this one is from the Dollar Tree and then we are going to use mesh this is optional because I'm going to attach it to the center and it depends on what you want to put in the center whether you're going to need this or not the mesh I usually use is from Joann's. I tried to catch it on sale, of course, and it's 10 and a half by 13 and a half inches. If you haven't seen these, they're a little bit on the tougher side, and I like them because whenever you need to fill in a space, these are a great way to do that. 
before I get started, I like to measure out how much of this mesh I'm going to need. And I just go a row outside of the area where I'm going to be attaching it. Meaning there's a row here that when I'm attaching it, I have something for it to hold on. And then just using a marker, and this one is just a Sharpie. I'm just marking on the outside where I need to cut. And you want to do a permanent marker. I might not even show really well on camera because you're just, you know, marking on the actual plastic little squares and it's hard to tell. You can attach this to the actual wreath form by either using zip ties or short pipe cleaners. To attach, I put my wreath form upside down. I'm going to put my little heart right there. And because I'm going to be filling in the space on the inside, I like to attach. As you can see here, I attached it about every two inches. And then I'm going to tie them all in the front of the wreath so that the back can be nice and smooth. I'm going to give it two twists and I'm going to fold like I usually do so it's nice and neat like this. All right, and we're all done with that. Now we're going to move on to our deco mesh. Let's go over the basics of the Dollar Tree deco mesh. Each deco mesh is six inches in width and five yards in length. And we're going to be cutting our deco mesh in 12 inch strips today. And those strips are going to make 15 bows. So you should have 15 strips of 12 inches each in each of the deco mesh rolls. To cut my deco mesh, I'm going to be using a rotary cutter, but you can of course use scissors. And this outer square on my mat right here is 12 inches. So that is how I'm going to measure and cut my deco mesh. For your pipe cleaners, you can either cut them in half or in one thirds. I like to cut them in one thirds, but that's my personal preference. And as you can see, that's going to be four inches for my little um, pipe cleaners because these are 12 inch pipe cleaners and that's pretty much the standard for them. And then when I'm done cutting them, I like to fold them and make little V's and they're ready to be put on the bow. Now let's make a Nadia Method bow. I'm grabbing one of my strips here and I'm just going to walk it out from the inside with my fingers until the outside edges overlap about an inch and a half no more than two inches. I'm going to pinch on top, pinch at the bottom, and bring it straight down to the center of the loop that I made. On top, I'm going to hold it right here, really nice and tight. On this side right here, I'm just going to start walking it up right here, and you have the little bow. This is our smooth end, and that's where I'm coming in with my pipe cleaner, and I'm just going to fold it over and then twist and you have a nice beautiful bow let's make another bow walking it out until it's overlapping about an inch and a half pinch on top pinch at the bottom bringing it down holding with one finger on top securely in place with my other hand and fingers I'm going to walk that center right up and kind of folding it like an accordion. This is our smooth side. We're going to grab a pipe cleaner, put it over right here. And then to ensure that it's nice and secure, I'm just going to fold the bow in half. And then right here, I'm going to give it two good twists at least or three. And there you go, you have a perfect little bow. I have three rolls of the pink and two rolls of the white all ready to go. And since there are 15 bows per deco mesh roll, there's going to be 30 that I'm going to be putting on this middle row right here. A few twists, then I'm going to fold it over and back. The two rolls of deco mesh was just perfect for this middle row right here. And so this is how I dispersed it. I have three on this section on top, three on the bottom, five right here, 
And right there on that little uh, corner or the top of the heart, I have seven. I wanted these to be quite full. Now, when you look at it from the front, don't forget, we still have three rolls of the pink that are going to go on the outside. And some of those are going to push this heart in a little bit. So this section is going to get closed up just a little bit. So... In retrospect, this is really full. Now I'm going to start putting the pink on. All the deco mesh is in and I think it looks so pretty. Here in the back, I have uh, 11 on the hard part, on the top part, three on top, five at the bottom. And then on the sides, I have seven right here on each side. Now we're going to do the center. Of course, you can do whatever you want, whether you put a little sign in here, or maybe you take a little bit more of this deco mesh and put it in the center. That would be nice too. I decided to go a little bit more towards the elegant side, and I'm going to grab these peonies from the Dollar Tree. And I'm probably going to do two packs or two little bushels because I do want to make sure that it's nice and full there and what I'm going to do is this little thing right here on the flower you can push it through so I'm just going to start putting them in and of course don't push it see where you're going and give a little pressure right there and as you can see it's sticking out and so where it's sticking out, I'm just going to put some hot glue around it later on. But I do want to make sure that all the flowers are in before I do that. In all honesty, it can stay there because it's kind of, um, it's kind of, you know, it's not on the loose side because those little squares are smaller than our little uh, tip of the flower right there. And just fill it in. The flowers are filling in so nicely and it gives such an elegant touch to the dark pink. You need to lighten the dark pink up and this is just perfect to do that. Now you can go in with your hot glue and just hot glue all around the edges right here if you want. But I'll show you something. You kind of almost don't need to because I'm literally picking up the wreath and tangling it with the flowers that's how strong the the little netting is holding our flowers so you really don't need to because it really is stuck on there really really well now i'm just going to go around and fluff everything out and i want to make sure that this does look like a heart and i want my white edges to be a little bit on the softer end so anything sticking out like that i'm going to bring it back and then just play around with it until it looks beautiful and we have another valentine's wreath For this project I will be using a 9 inch willow wreath and the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to give it a coat of white chalk paint and I'm using the Rust-Oleum in linen white and I'm going to set it aside to dry for a few hours. Next I'm grabbing two bushels of the Amaranthus florals from the Dollar Tree. I'm only going to be using the white ones, taking them off the stem. Uh, for this wreath, I am going to be cutting those ends off and I'm going to be cutting them off as close to the white as possible. Next, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be hot gluing these branches. And basically what I'm doing is I'm just going along the lines of the actual wreath. And starting from the inside, working my way out. And basically what I'm doing here is making it look 
like this wreath was put together along with these branches. So I'm just following the twists of the wreath and hot gluing the branches going around and around. If I was using this wreath somewhere in a wedding, I would just leave it as is. But this is a Valentine's wreath. So I decided to grab these vase fillers and I'm going to be using just the pink ones and the white ones because I wanted to keep it elegant and sweet. So all I'm doing is just grabbing different sizes of the pink and the white and hot gluing it all around the wreath. For the finishing touch of this wreath, I will be using this boa that I got at the Dollar Tree during Halloween. And I'm just going to take these feathers and using just the soft areas, I'm going to cut the feather into about an inch to two inch pieces. And then I'm going to be using little tweezers and just folding the little piece in half putting some hot glue on it and just sticking it throughout the wreath. And I'm just going to be going all around the wreath and filling up little empty areas in between the branches of the wreath. This gave the wreath such an elegant look and I feel like in person it's it just looks so complete and beautiful. I don't think it shows like that on camera but I promise you guys in person it looks absolutely stunning and it looks like it does not need anything else. So for this wreath I'm starting with a heart wreath form from the Dollar Tree. Then I'm going to start with four of the white deco mesh and two of these. Usually do six to seven inches. So my six inches is right here and I just cut it. I am going to use chenille wires from Hobby Lobby, but you can also get them at the Dollar Tree. I'm going to fold those in half. They cut fairly easy. Here we go. I'll grab three and... I'll do my first curl and I've done this differently. I've done it where I would curl it and put it in a paper clip. I've done it where I would curl it and put it in some sort of, you know, clothespin or something. But I have been using my fingers for the longest time. I just, you know, I, I find it, it's the easiest and fastest. Okay, I got my three curls. And I just crisscross them, grab a chenille wire, and when I tighten in the back, I really just really tighten it. I put my finger right here and kind of twist it over my finger. That way it brings all of this together, and I know it's nice and tight. Uh, basically, I'm going to make four packs of these, and I'm going to be doing the same thing, cutting them. And then making bundles of three. I have all of my little bundles made up. And I'm going to be putting my bundles on this middle ring and the outer ring. I'm not sure how many I'm going to need. I'm just going to just start putting them on. And I will tell you at the end how many I ended up using. Because I make a lot of these wreaths. But I've never made it on a heart form. So it's a little different because all my sections are not the same okay the last one i am going to put on the corner which is on actually the first one because i kind of wanted to go in a little bit so instead of putting it on the second and third i am putting this last one on the first and just so you guys know i used up actually six rolls now if you don't think it's full that's fine because we are using the edge or the last row as you can see all my curls are going in but when you hang this wreath all of this is going to go out and it's going to get filled do you see what i mean it's going to get nice and full once you hang it up now we're grabbing this decorative mesh and once again i'm just going to cut into six inch strips and then what I'm going to do is grab more of my chenille stems and I'm going to cut them in half. All right, so I have my little chenille wire and what I'm going to do is I'm going to collect 
and kind of like make a little bow pull it up and twist before I bring it together I wanted to show you that there's really no right or wrong way to do this there is no edging on the edge right here and there's no edging you know obviously where you cut so it doesn't matter how you bring the bow together which way just bring it together scrunch it in the middle and just do a little twist do the little pom-pom and that is going to go in between our curly mesh on the wreath I have all of these little bows made up so the next thing I'm going to do is we're going to put these in between the two rows that we made I'm just going to go from the bottom wiggle my way in grab the little bow and then just attach it to whichever you want I'm going to attach this one to the outer edge over here to the third row from the inside and that's it it really doesn't matter where you attach it because of all these little snow things it'll catch on it'll stay in place for sure i'm just going to go all the way around for the center of the wreath i decided to use one of these hearts and it came on this kind of like a string of hearts that the dollar tree has so as usual i'm going to use two chenille stems i like this flat so i'll just do this put this on here all right my little heart is nice and dry I'm just going to squeeze it in here and it's just going to go like that. You can use obviously whatever you have, whatever you want. I just had this heart on hand and I thought it would be really cute. And I'm just going to attach it to the first loop. I always do this part really lightly so that way you know in case it's not in the center or I have it too tight or it needs to be loosened up. So I just kind of do this really loosely, then check what it looks like, if it's standing up nicely, and it looks nice and tight and actually really perfect. So there you go, and we are done with this Valentine's wreath. For a coffee filter wreath, we're going to need a few basic things. Of course, we're going to need our coffee filters, a wreath form, hot glue gun, and of course, hot glue sticks. Let's go over the specifics on those. As far as your coffee filters, it depends how big your wreath form is. You're going to need anywhere from 200 to 500 and even more if you're using a really big wreath form. As far as the wreath form, this wreath form is from the Dollar Tree. This is the most common one at the Dollar Tree. It's 9.8 inches or 24 centimeters. And there is one really important thing you want to remember before we start making this wreath is this wreath form has a coated layer. It's a layer that protects the foam and kind of makes it stronger. And the most important thing when using a hot glue gun on this wreath form is you want to make sure that you're using a low temperature glue gun. Here's the reason why. If you're using a high temperature glue gun, there's a chance you're going to penetrate this uh, kind of surrounding protective layer. And once you pass that, you're not going to be able to glue anything because it's basically thick foam but the only way to hot glue to this wreath form is actually on this protective layer using a low temperature hot glue gun if you have a hot glue gun that has settings on it low and high you just go to the low and it's going to be the same heat as this one now let's get started on making our little ruffles here the reason i have my measuring mat is to show you how big my filters are and these are almost 10 inches so let me just fold these really quickly in half there you go so almost five inches so nine and three quarters in length so these are pretty standard okay to get started on this there's a few way to fold our little uh, ruffles a lot of people fold them in half then fold them in half again and then they'll either fold them in half again or they'll curl it whatever you want to do is fine and um some people when they fold it like this 
they'll just kind of do a little fold in the middle right here and that is how they're going to hot glue it and go all the way around you can definitely do that today i'm going to what i call is a fun method so when you have your coffee filter you kind of find your center and what i like to do is i find my middle when i find my middle all i do is i bring one side in to the center the other side to the center find my middle and kind of squeeze it when i found my middle squeeze it i kind of start turning it turning it and i make this kind of like a little leaf right here and this is what i'm going to attach the reason i do this is i call this kind of lazy method and a fun method because you can definitely do this with your kiddos with your grandkids look at this i fold it in half i bring one side in i bring the other side in very nice it still has the ruffle then i kind of crunch it in the middle right here and then with this one i'm just trying to kind of flatten it out to make a little petal and twisting it did you see how i twisted it just a little bit that way this is all secure and when i hot glue it it's not gonna go anywhere when it's going to be pushed against some other ones see how it is bam we already have one for me and i'm just going to continue doing this there you go ruffle ruffle middle and i'm just going to kind of flatten and twist at the same time you see one hand is going one way the other one's going the other way and then i'm going to bend it up because this is the part where we're going to hot glue it fold it in half or find your middle somehow there you go bring it up bring it up kind of squeeze in the middle and just kind of there you go and you're gently kind of twisting because you don't want to really torque it because you're going to rip the actual paper right here so that's why i'm just gently kind of torquing and then bam that's it find my center bring it in bring it in find your middle with the other hand kind of hold it and kind of twist as i'm going along and i'm just kind of the reason i keep on doing this is you're as it's going around you're crunching all of that there you go and then you just kind of sit it up and do like a 90 degree right here and this is fun don't you think this is fun i think it's fun so i'm going to go ahead and just keep on making my little bundles right here and just twist 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 and a 90 degree angle all right my friends now it's time to protect your little fingers and i get these finger protectors at the dollar tree they come three for a dollar really really nice all right i have some of these <laughs> there's so many of them i basically have two boxes of these i'm not quite sure how many i have but here we go i'm going to start and the way i go is basically we're going to go in kind of these loops right here starting in the middle and do you see it doesn't go through this upper layer of the foam right here and we're just going to start hot gluing them every other layer i'm going to go in between here's what i mean i have one two three then this next layer is going to be right on top pretty much one and two and then again we're going to go one two three and then again one two so i have one two three here next i'm going to move about half an inch down and then two right there in between as i'm making this wreath i had to stop and just kind of take a moment to take in how absolutely stunning this is any holiday i mean really you put an orange ribbon you have fall you put a pink one and you have spring or yellow you know uh, you put a red one you got valentine's or christmas if you're coming to an area where there's nowhere to put the actual petal the actual part right here so what i do is i actually fold it fold it up just hot glue it up and then hot glue the ending 
and just stick it in place. And anywhere you feel like it's empty or it needs a little bit more, which using the method I've been using, I don't feel like I need to fill anywhere in. You can see the green wreath, nothing like that. To hang the wreath, you can do one of few things. You can just grab a ribbon and for winter this would be pretty and just hot glue it on itself and just hang it like that and it'll be so pretty. Whatever the holiday you're going to use it for, you could do that. I am going to kind of do it differently. I want this to be floating. So I'm going to go in the back. I'm just going to pick a spot and I'm going to grab a thick gauge wire here and just go through the center of my wreath form cut it off and then I'm going to twist once and then what I like to do is the left one will go to the right the right one will go to the left and then continue twisting and that'll lock it in place and I'm just going to turn it around so all that mess is on the inside and if anything's sticking out what I do is just I literally poke it straight into the wreath and then right here I'm going to give it a little bit of hot glue just to kind of seal it in place because that's what it's going to be hung on and on the other side just seal all that wire in place let it cool I'm going to give this top one a little twist there you go, and that is how I'm going to hang it with that little loop. As you can see, my hot glue has dried right there. And now I'm going to do one more step. But look at this wreath. You do not have to. You could leave it just like it is. And just, oh, how beautiful. What I want to do is I want to grab some rose gold. I'm going to be using the rose gold by Craft Smart here. Give it a little shake there. Then I'm going to grab a shabby brush and we're going to dry brush it on our wreath. So I'm going to tap it a little bit and I don't want it to be too much. That's why I have my little uh, towel right here in case I have too much on it. And we're going to just kind of brush it like this. It's going to have a little rustic feel to it, but depending on how the light is going to hit it, it's going to glisten a little bit because of the gold that's in this color. And I'm doing it very lightly. No pressure, nothing. Just very, very lightly. So here is the wreath with my rose gold. And here it is without. But it just brings out that those curls and those ruffles. And it looks so absolutely beautiful. going to be using this premium home raffia from the Dollar Tree and this one has been colored pink and this seems kind of sturdy this is me really like pulling on it so I am going to try we're going to wrap it all around this wreath and then we're going to decorate it just a dollop of hot glue to set it in place before I start wrapping this I think to make my life easier I'm going to do this in pieces and from time to time I'm just going to give it a little bit of hot glue so it stays in place and I'm going to take my time this is so relaxing all right so here is what I found out about this quote-unquote raffia this is not really raffia um, as in you know the original kind of raffia this is paper I mean and the cool part about this is strong look at this I did this whole thing right here and it was so easy and by the way when you're going around make sure you pick a side where you're going to have things that are kind of ending now this is my very last one I tried to hide as much as I could behind so you could actually not even really tell but it, you know the last one there's so much you can do all right I kind of opened up the raffia and then I'm going to take a piece of jute cord 
I measured how much I wanted the height because I'm going to hot glue it actually so it sits in, in this spot. But I wanted to hide the fact that this is a um, jute cord. Very, very quickly, lightly, I'm just going to hot glue the jute cord and kind of hide it. Just kind of like this. So I'm just doing it in the middle. That way we can like wrap it around. And I'm going to hot glue this piece right on top. See this way it's nice and strong and you're going to be able to hang it but you cannot tell that there's a jute cord in between. And here is my back. Since I have this little thing right here, I think I'm going to cover that up even further. We're going to decorate this really, really simply here. I have the little Valentine's felt flowers. And I'm going to get three of these out. I'm going to put the pink ones on the sides right here. I'm flatten them out a little bit and then the purple one is going to go in between this one's a little bigger maybe I'll use this oh that's pretty you guys it is that simple you guys how pretty is this oh I'm so in love with this started on this wreath you're going to need a few things now this is a wire form from the Dollar Tree it is 14 inches and I was lucky enough to get a beige one because they're usually that dark green color then you're going to need some 21 inch deco mesh and some chenille stems and also I do always start my uh, if I do a bubble wreath I always start and end with a zip tie just to make sure you have a nice secure uh, hold because of the holidays or something I'm not sure why I have not been able to get any new deco mesh from the Dollar Tree so I am actually going to my uh, regular stash here and this is so beautiful look how bright and like iridescent it is so to get started I'm going to unwrap it just a little bit and what I'm going to do is I'm going to just about an inch to two inches just to have a nice tail I'm just walking it up to the middle and then to the top I try to kind of keep it as straight as I can to tie this to my wreath, I usually like using either the second or the third intersection right here. So I'm going to go to the third row and I'm just going to push my deco mesh down and come on in with my zip tie. I'm going to push it down so it's nice and smooth up here. And I usually like to order my zip ties from Amazon and because I know it's nice and secure, it's going to hold it. Um, I just feel like the Dollar Tree zip ties are not strong enough. Okay, let's have some fun here. Before I start making my loops, I'm going to get my pipe cleaners and cut them in half. They cut fairly well with scissors. Sometimes I use wire cutters, not a big deal. To get started on the bubble, I'm somebody who likes, um, I guess, my deco mesh to go the way it's supposed to in the beginning, so I don't fuss around with it too much as I'm going along. So my bubble is always going to be going this way. It's going to look like a bubble, and I just kind of take the ends, bring them in, and I measure out my 10 inches. My 10 inches is this bar right here, so I know I'm going from here. To here I'm going to bring it in and obviously you can do you know eight inches you could do 12 inches it all depends on the look you're going for I'm grabbing my pipe cleaner and I'm going to work on the third row some people like to grab two I feel more comfortable when it's a single row it doesn't have that room to move around 
but it's just me. You can definitely do both of these rows. I just feel like it's more secure with that one. I'm going to give it two twists and I'm going to push it down. Look at this. Isn't this a beautiful bubble? And I really didn't have to do anything. It's already formed. And we are going to push it to the side. And there is the side view of my little bubble. And since I started with my edges kind of on the inside, see how they're kind of on the inside already? It's just going to be easy. It's just going to follow my direction here. And this wreath can definitely be used for holidays and events like weddings, especially because of this beautiful white mesh that's that has iridescence to it. Definitely can use it for weddings and, you know, life events, I guess. I'm just going to give it two more twists and then kind of bring the wires together and then fold them in half. It's just nice quick and you know it gets all the sharp ends out of the way so it doesn't scratch your wall door wherever you're going to hang it and it looks nice and neat this is six loops six ten inch loops in this one section i think i'm going to add one more but honestly six should be just fine um it also depends on the color that you're using the darker the color um, it's going to look better, but just because this is a white wreath, I'm going to give it one more loop Just to make sure that it just has a nice full look to it. You can do this any way you want But what I like to do is after I'm done with a particular section I just go back and fluff out that area with the white one I want to make sure that each section has enough poof and enough of the deco mesh so that is why I'm going back and uh, I'm just making sure that it's enough this is what the wreath is looking like so far so what I am going to do is I'm going to go all the way around completed doing the same steps and then I will be right back and we'll do a little bit of a bow decor and yes, I did use a, a pipe cleaner, but I'm also going to use a little zip tie. I do these kind of twists where it goes from one end to another and then I'll take them and I kind of do like almost like an S right there and it fills up that space. And what it also does is, you know, it's going to get thicker in that area. so. The nice thing about it is it's going to cover um, the wire form, if, especially if you can't find this like beige one and you're using the green one. This is what I was talking about when I was saying that I have my own little spin on it and it's doing these. You usually don't find people doing this, but I feel like when you do this, besides getting full and stuff, it has this beautiful kind of overall look on top of it. Wreaths are so much fun and you could experiment with them and I definitely do and I enjoy it. Today we're going to be making a loop bow. This bow is amazing if you have ribbon that's left over like I have this Easter one. Um, then I have this one a leftover. This, I have a lot of this, so I'm not, <laughs> that's not a leftover. I just wanted a little bit of like a rustic feel to it. But really, it's going to be an elegant wreath because look at these together. It's going to be lovely. So basically, the basic one or the most important one is this one. It is a wired ribbon that I got at Joan Fabrics a very long time ago. And the first thing you want to do is you want to Measure how much you want your loop to be. I usually eye it and I said, hmm, this looks good. Then that is my length. I measure my length and let me see here. It uh, It's going to be 20 inches, which is fine. So I'm going to get at least three for now and then see if I want to do any more. And so that means I want 20 inches of the other one. And I'm also going to make three of these. And this is just one of the simplest bows you can make. If you have a hard time making bows, this is the bow for you. I promise. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make ducktails everywhere. And I just fold it in half. 
and do this i'm going to go to the other side starting with my thickest ribbon i'm going to fold it in half first but don't pinch it right here because this is your loop here this is where you decide how big you want it and then measure how big your loop is going to be let's make it yeah let's make it five so five that means i have a 10 inch loop five on each side make sure this is nice and fluffy and then i put it in between my fingers at the point where i'm going to bring it all together next i'm going to fold this in half just to make sure i have my middle so start with the tails and then go about midway up now i'm just measuring i have my five inches there you go and bring it together i do this usually by eye but if you want to measure that's fine too bring it together measure your approximate five inches and then keep on layering it until you're all done so this is what it looks like when it's all together and what i'm going to do is i'm just going to kind of kind of zigzag it together and this is where you want to bring your muscles you want to make sure you get it nice and tight if you want to use a zip tie for this i highly recommend it now i'm going to start fanning this out and just start opening up the bow and some of them try to twist them so they're facing forward is it starting to look like a bow yet you guys these tails are going to be so pretty and this is what's going to kind of fill the bow in i am going to throw some tails up but before we get too far Let's grab a chenille wire and we're just going to do one twist so we have something to um, attach to our wreath but let's just have fun here. Okay now that my bow is fluffed up more or less I'm going to attach it to the wreath and I want my tails or the majority of the tails to be kind of facing down and I'm going to attach it between the second and third row. And it's going to fill in that space that we kind of didn't have enough of our decommission. And now I'm just going to straighten it out as much as I can. The next thing I'm going to do is I have these little glitter berries from Easter. And I wanted to incorporate them in between the bow. Because as I said, this is going to be a little bit like on the shabby side. So we want to make it pretty. I am going to remove the greenery here because I just want the little berries. And the reason I'm keeping them kind of long is because I'm going to put them through the bow, but then I need to twist them around the wreath. Just starting here and there. Just going to poke through right there. And so in the back, I'm just going to twist around my wreath form and make sure that as you're twisting, the, the side that's sharp is going inside the wreath. And your berries are nice and secure, but also it is safe in the back. Because the bow will automatically push these sides apart, I'm going to take a pipe cleaner, put it through a little bit of the deco mesh on both sides, just like this. I kind of loop them on and i'm going to loop it around that last row that way i know it's going to be secured and in place and it's not going to pull apart and then just work a little bit of the mesh right here in and now it's fully covered play around make sure you have the loops the way you want them the berries are in the right place that you want them to be and that's it For this wreath, I'm going to be using this bamboo wreath from the Dollar Tree, and it's about 12 inches. As you can see, it's not really an even 12 inches, but that's all right. I will also be using floral wire to attach the florals to the wreath. And the florals I'll be using are these green hydrangeas, rose little bushels from the Dollar Tree. I'm going to grab wire cutters. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to attach it right here. Three of these bushels per each. And I'm going to get one long one to put on top and then another shortish one. Okay, so the long one I'm going to put on top 
right there. Then I'm going to put one short one right here. And that's going to bring out that rose right here. And then one right here. And the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to grab a piece of wire and just wrap it around. Because it's kind of, it's almost like an egg shape here. I'm going to make this my bottom because the flowers are going to fill this area up right here. And you're not going to be able to tell that it's kind of, well, crooked. So the next thing I want to do is I want to shape it to the wreath and we're just going to bend it. We're just going to bend it whichever direction this is going. So for example, right here. And for now, I'm just going to shove it in between the twines. We'll attach it later. And then I'm going to work on the second one. All right, now I'm grabbing more wire and I'm just attaching the florals straight onto my wreath. All right, my flowers are nice and secured in the back with some wire. Alrighty, now we're going to decorate the area in the middle with a bow and I wanted to keep this farmhouse so I am going to use a burlap bow um, and this is from the Dollar Tree. I measured, pre-measured it and I'm going to use two pieces and I call this type of bow a Christmas bow and I'll tell you why. It's because I put, the way I put it together. I did want to shabby this up a little bit so I'm going to take about two strands from the edges. I have another piece for the tail. And the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take all of these three pieces and I'm going to grab my favorite, my current favorite, ribbon from the Dollar Tree. And if you've seen my bows, you know I absolutely love doing this. And I'm going to overlap the ribbon here a little bit. And what you want is about half an inch on the edge so you can put it over and hot glue it in the back. I'm just going to put it over and just hold it there. This is going to get hidden anyway, so this is really not a big deal. All right, I'm going to do this to all three of the pieces. Aren't these just the prettiest little ribbons? <laughs> All right, now time to put it together. This is where you decide how big you want the bow to be. Okay, I think I like that. All right, now that I've decided, look how much, oh, I wasted so much. I'm going to bring it together. You want the two big ones to be the same size. Now here's how we're going to bring it together. This is how a Christmas bow is pretty much made. So I'm going to fold this in half to the front and fold the sides back. Just like that. All right, since I don't have 10 hands, I'm just going to tie this with a wire real quick. Now we're going to do the same thing here. Fold it in half and then to the side and to the side. And then I'm going to bring it together right here. I'm going to grab another piece of wire and bring these two together. So Christmas bow is where you take a loop, a loop, and then another piece for the tail. I'm going to find my center, bring it together, and then to the sides. And in case you're wrong, just just check with yourself right there. And then we're going to attach this to the bottom. Now I left my tail of the wire longer when I was putting th these two loops together so that I could bring it over. Now I'm just going to tighten it in the back. All right, now that I feel that it's nice and secure, I'm going to grab another piece of this ribbon and bring it together. And all of a sudden you have a very pretty little bow. It would be smart to do this part before, but apparently, well, I didn't. Uh, I fed a wire through, as you can see, and then I'm going to... All right, now that I have my wire twisted, I'm just going to put it straight onto my wreath.
I'm going to be using decomesh. I have this beautiful pink one and two white ones and then we are going to be using one of these rings. They come in a set of two from the Dollar Tree. They are 8 inches in diameter or 20.3 centimeters. And then you're also going to need some chenille stems or pipe cleaners. For your pipe cleaners, you can either cut them in half and it'll give you six inch strips or in thirds, which will give you four inch strips. I like to do four inches because I don't like to mess with a lot of wire in the back of my wreath. The Dollar Tree Decomesh is six inches by five yards in length. So today I'm going to be cutting them in eight inch strips. I'm going to curl it. It gives it such a tight curl and I feel like it's going to fray less when you do it a little longer. To hold my curl together, I'm just going to use one of these clips and they come in a pack of six from the Dollar Tree. I'm done cutting up my white deco mesh roll. I'm just going to be using one roll white, one roll pink and this one roll made 23 strips at eight inches each. Now I'm going to start cutting up my pink one. The basic method of doing a curly wreath is you get three curls, bundle them together, and you put them on your wreath form. If you're using three different colors, just grab one of each color and bundle it up with the same color it's pretty obvious what you do in our case we are using two colors which means we're going to do pink pink white and then we're going to do white one pink and then i'm going to continue doing that pink pink white 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 pink back and forth to put these together is pretty simple roll the way you want your curl to roll so either a little tighter or a little looser bring it together with the clamp. I sometimes just put it in between my fingers instead of using the clamp, but that's all right. We're just going to be using a clamp in this case. And then there's another one. And here's a white one. There you go. Whichever color I have one of, that's the one that's going to go in the middle. So I have one of this one. Then this one I'm going to crisscross it with. And then I'm going to put the second color on the other side, kind of making a little snowflake. And there you go. These two are crossing and this one is in the middle. Then bring it together, grab our pipe cleaner, fold it in half, bring it around, fold it in half. This will give you the tightest way to uh, connect it and you are done with your little bundle. Next, we're going to do white, white, pink. So we got the white one. Then the one that's one of is going to go on top of it. Then on top of that, the other white one is going to crisscross it. And there you go. So white, pink, and then white again. And we're going to kind of just crunch it together. Grab our pipe cleaner, put it around. Then I'm going to take it and I'm going to kind of pull it up from the bottom here and I'm going to give it two twists. This is going to give it a nice tight hold and there you go. I'm done making all my bundles and all together I have 14 bundles, seven of each, which is nice because we're just going to do every other as we're going down the wreath here. And our wreath is divided into three, which means we're going to have five, five and four but trust me, it's not going to be noticeable and this is going to be a beautiful, beautiful centerpiece. All right, and as I said, we're going to go every other. And this is the reason I do short pipe cleaners. Here in the back, I'm going to give it a few twists, fold it over and fold it back. And that's it. Then we got pink, pink, white here. And then we're going to do white white pink again as you can see in the back i attached my bundles in row two if i was making this as a wreath i would definitely use another roll of deco mesh this is not enough for a wreath for a centerpiece it's fine because we're also filling it in with a little bit of ribbon it's going to be flat it's going to have a candle in the middle it's going to look really really well and it's plenty because as a centerpiece you're not looking at it from top down you're looking at it from the sides 
and you will see that it's more than enough as a centerpiece to use only two rolls of the deco mesh and now for the ribbon I'm going to be using a gray this polka dot white and this light pink the pink one is Ofray and this other one is um, Floral Garden, but they all are from the Dollar Tree and they're all grow grain ribbon. For a ribbon, I'm going to be cutting it into eight inch strips and you can either do it separately like that or the way I like to do it is just measure off eight inches and I go up and down like this. Or you could have a board that's eight inches and you could go around the board. You could definitely do that. Now all my ribbon is cut up. I'm going to just sit back, relax, and make some dovetail. Just folding them in half and cutting off a little triangle there. Now it's time to make a ribbon bundles. I'm just grabbing the ribbon, laying it over each other here. A pipe cleaner that's four inches long just like the pipe cleaners we used for our bundles here and I like to fold it in half even it out if I have to let's see here everything seems good the pink one maybe a little bit there and then just giving it two twists in the back and this is going to be ready to go right on the wreath form when I cut up the ribbon I got 13 strips each now that I got my ribbon bundles all ready I'm going to go in between our little bundles right here and attach the ribbons same thing a few twists in the back then I'm going to fold it in half and then back when they all fill in it's going to be easier to spread it out and it's going to be so pretty all of the ribbon bundles are in and because we only had 13 of those and 14 of the decomage bundles we are missing one little one right here but you know what it's not going to be a problem after you open all of these up and just spread them out it's not even going to be noticeable it's just going to blend in and look beautiful and all I'm doing here is just spreading them out putting them in between here and there and you're not even able to tell where the two bundles are that are missing a ribbon in between them because you just kind of spread them out to put the candle in i like to put it always from the top that way all of this decor kind of opens up so i just put it straight over the candle and as you can see just pushes out and there you go, we have our beautiful Valentine's centerpiece. got tired watching all those beautiful wreaths did you have a favorite Louis which one was your favorite which one was your favorite definitely let me know in the comments below if you love watching wreath tutorials like this definitely please subscribe hit the bell button and don't forget to give this video and us a thumbs up if you would like to see more Valentine's wreaths Louis has prepared two for you right here thank you so much for being with us as for us i think we're going to go get some peanut butter and maybe go for a little walk and we will see you in our next video bye my friends bye, bye.